Hey everyone, it's Curtis here with an on the back wheel video. Today I wanted to talk about the new 2021 Gas Gas bikes, specifically their Enduro lineup. Now a lot of people may not have heard of Gas Gas. They were a manufacturer from Spain who have been making bikes for years and gained a great reputation for their Enduro bikes and especially their Trials bikes. I owned a 2007 EC300 and it was a fantastic bike. Recently they were purchased by KTM. It seems to me KTM really wanted the Gas Gas Trials bikes to fill a hole in their lineup. But they are also selling a full lineup of bikes based off the current KTMs. Think of them as a budget KTM. And to be honest, KTM do need a cheaper range. Their bikes are getting bloody expensive now, let alone the Husqvarna's which are even more expensive. While they are launching a full range of bikes, I'm just gonna concentrate on the Enduro bikes in this video. So what bikes are they releasing and how are they different to the KTMs? Well, in the Enduro range, there is the EC250 and 300 two strokes and the EC250F and 350F four strokes. You notice the 450s and 500s are missing. It looks like they're leaving them up to KTM and Husqvarna. Might be because of their more expensive prices. All the bikes are Euro 5 standard and are coming to Europe and Australia. What is strange is it looks like only the EC300 is coming to the USA. Why? Your guess is as good as mine here. I'll go through the prices, they do vary depending on the country. The 252 stroke is 12,940 in Australia and 9,049 in Europe. The EC300 is 14,155 Australian dollars. That's a lot. 9,499 euros and 9,599 US dollars. So that's pretty well priced if you ask me. The EC250F is 12,940 in Australia and 9,549 in Europe. And finally, the 350F is 13,750 in Australia and 9,949 in Europe. I'm not sure what the Australian prices are doing. We seem to get the Australia tax a bit and it looks like that's what's happening with the EC300. Now, you can notice that all the bikes are a fair bit cheaper than the KTM counterparts, but they look to be essentially the same. Well, you aren't wrong, and if you look closely, there are some changes and some minor cost-cutting measures going on here. All the bikes have linkage rear suspension, a positive if you ask me, no map switch, silver unbranded rims made by XL, silver unbranded handlebars made by Necken, different expansion chambers on the two-stroke, Maxxis Enduro tyres all round, a slightly different swing arm, forged three-way adjustable triple clamps, brake tech brakes, and a brake tech hydraulic clutch. So the brakes in the KTM and Husqvarna are usually Brembo's. So the bikes are really similar, well, by the fact they're red, and the changes are very minor if you ask me. You may be wondering who on earth brake tech is. I was thinking the same thing, so I looked them up. They are a European brake manufacturer who has a great reputation, and their brakes are used by a fair few bikes in the Moto2 grid, so they must be all right. What I find interesting as well is the gas gas bikes are three kilograms more than the KTM equivalents and the same as the Husqvarna's. I'm guessing this is because of the linkage system. The rear subframe is the same as the KTM, not the fancy composite one that's found on the Husky. The plastics are different too and I think they look fantastic. I mean, I don't see a reason to get a KTM now when you get one of these for less. The changes they've made are more than worth their savings to me. You're getting everything else, including TPI on the two strokes and WP suspension, along with your lithium battery and everything else. The dealer network looks really good in Australia and Europe. Uh, in the USA, it looks like it's expanding. There are a fair few, but there could be more. And you would presume a lot of KTM dealers would sell these as well, as the servicing is exactly the same. And it also appears that the new gas gas are here to stay. The websites are fantastic. They've set up race teams all over the world namely in the World Enduro Circuit and AMA Supercross and Motocross, and their marketing is really good, not like it was before they were purchased by KTM. I'm really keen to check these out. What do you guys think? Would you consider one of the new Gas Gas bikes? Let me know in the comments below. All right, thanks for watching, everyone. Make sure you hit that like button and subscribe, and I'll catch you later.